This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Good morning and happy Friday. Thanks for starting your morning with us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Nicole Griffin. Lauren Casey has the morning off. We have a lot of news to get to this morning, but first we want to begin with a developing story. Two people are facing charges now in a crash that killed three teenagers back on May 23rd. That was last Saturday. Prosecutors believe the suspects in this case, Okadima Link and Shantiana Willis, are father and daughter. And new information that we're learning now about what happened. Witnesses say the pair may have been racing near West Kessler Boulevard North Drive. We will hear from family members and from the police chief about this case coming up on Good Morning Indiana. We are also tracking the very latest on the COVID-19 pandemic and the state health department confirmed 646 new cases since the pandemic began. More than 33,000 Hoosiers have been diagnosed with the virus in our state. The State Department of Health also reports 37 new deaths from COVID-19 and so far 1,907 people in Indiana have died from the coronavirus. So we will break down all that information throughout the morning here on Good Morning Indiana. We want to now get a first check of your Storm Team 6 forecast with meteorologist Todd Glasson. Todd, not too bad stepping out the door this morning. You know, temperature wise, it's not bad at all. We are sitting in the 60s in most locations. We have a little bit of rain, but today's the day, Nicole, that we've been talking about where the cold front is going to come through and that is going to usher in beautiful weather as we head into the weekend. We will have to go through around the storms, though I think this morning into the afternoon hours to get there. Uh, but overall, it's going to be a pretty decent afternoon and evening for us. You notice a few showers down towards Bloomington. Temperature in Bloomington's at 66, 64 in Indy right now and 67 in Lafayette. So we'll deal with some morning rain slash storms. They should come to an end for most of us by about midday. It's a sunny finish. It'll turn less humid very, very quickly. Soon as that front goes through and our temperature will eventually climb into the upper 70s to right around 80 degrees later on this afternoon. The weekend though, we are in the 70s with sunshine. More on that forecast coming up in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thank you so much. And as Todd just mentioned, the weekend will be beautiful. And that means many people will likely be getting out on their boats. And lots of people may take advantage of this nice weather to go out on some lakes across the area. So our Kelsey Anderson is going to break down what you need to know if you are heading out. We are going to hear from Fisher's Police about some of the common things, the mistakes that people make, what you need to know, some boating safety reminders so you can keep your family safe. We will have that story plus news, weather, and traffic to start your Friday. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Police say these two people were involved in a deadly crash that killed three teenagers walking on Indy's northwest side. Now at 430, we're learning what may have triggered the chain reaction of events. And a new study right here in Indiana could help unlock answers surrounding the coronavirus, what researchers hope to learn about the virus. And one local school district says what you decide at the polls on Tuesday could shape the future of education. Thanks for starting your morning with us here on Good Morning Indiana. We made it to Friday. I'm Nicole Griffin. Lauren Casey has the morning off. Meteorologist Todd Klassen joins us from his home studio. Todd, you're saying this weekend is going to be beautiful. It's going to be spectacular, Nicole. We've been talking about it all week long as we've been dealing with the heat, we've been dealing with the humidity, and now it's going to be sunny. No humidity and temperatures that are going to be extremely comfortable. Now we have to get through the cold front, which does have to come through uh, during the day today before we get there. Uh, but I do think it's going to turn into a really nice afternoon and evening. So don't give up on those Friday plans because of the threat of rain. The cold front itself, is off to our west still, just getting ready to move to Chicago as well as Champaign. There's not a whole lot of precipitation with it right now, but out ahead of it, especially once the sun starts to come up and we build a little more heating into uh, the picture here, there will be some scattered showers and storms that flare up. The front comes through the metro area by about midday. Some storms blossom on the eastern side of the state by early afternoon, but then the front is through by 3 p.m. and that is going to usher in the more comfortable air mass for 
more later on uh, this evening. Temperatures right now, they sit in the mid 60s across the area as we go throughout the day. Morning clouds, some showers through midday and then becoming mostly sunny this evening with temperatures by 4 p.m. Nicole, right around 73 degrees. All right, Todd, thank you. We are keeping an eye on traffic this morning as you head out the door on this Friday. This is a live look at our in-dot traffic camera this morning at I-70 West of Lindhurst Drive. You can see not many cars on the road at this early hour. There is a closure, an interstate closure here. The westbound lanes of I-70 will be closed here in this area until June 28. Let's take another look at a traffic camera this morning. This is I-465 at Arlington Avenue. A little busier here in this area, but everything is moving up to speed as you head out the door on this Friday. New overnight, police are searching for answers in a deadly crash on the city's southwest side. Around midnight, officers were called to a person down on West Mills Road near Kellum Drive. When officers arrived, they found the victim laying in the street. A witness told officers she saw a vehicle hit the body and leave. This morning, police are trying to figure out if the victim was already in the street. And also new this morning, a shooting on the city's northeast side sends two women to the hospital. A Metro police officer heard shots fired around 1030 Thursday night near 34th and Keystone. When an officer pulled a car over, they found the women inside that car with gunshot wounds. Police believe the shooting happened at a gas station in the area. And this morning, the women are listed in stable condition. This morning, two people faced charges in the crash, killing three teens while they were walking on the city's northwest side. And now witnesses say the alleged drivers may have been racing. The prosecutor's office now tells us they believe the suspects in this case, Okadema Link and Shantiana Willis, are father and daughter. The May 23rd crash happened on West Kessler Boulevard North Drive on the northwest side around 1.20 in the morning. The crash killed 15-year-old Kiara Brown, 14-year-old David Evans, and 13 year old Tijiana Velez. The three teens were walking along the road and one witness told investigators the vehicles appeared to be racing. Uh, whether it's 1.30 in the morning or, or some other time, um, I think the speed limit down around that area is 35 or so. Um, you know, you're, you're doubling that, almost getting to the point where you're tripling those kind of speeds. That's, that's just, that's irresponsible. Well, this morning, Willis and Link both face a number of charges, including reckless homicide. Now to new development in the case of George Floyd. The U.S. attorney on this case revealing no decision has been made yet on any charges. As ABC's Inez de la Quatera reports, the news prompting protests in Minneapolis and around the nation. Overnight, more destructive protests in Minneapolis. Windows smashed, dozens of businesses ransacked and set ablaze, including the police precinct in the neighborhood where George Floyd died while in police custody. This after prosecutors say they're not yet ready to press charges in the case. Video shows Floyd on the ground, handcuffed, then losing consciousness with Officer Derek Chauvin's knee on his neck. Medics say they were unable to find Floyd's pulse on the way to the hospital. Both the Justice Department and FBI now investigating the matter. We are conducting a robust and meticulous investigation into the circumstances surrounding the events of May 25th, 2020 and the police officers' actions on that evening. An estimated 4,000 people marching peacefully through Minneapolis earlier, demanding justice. Many of them chanting, I can't breathe, some of the final words uttered by Floyd. <laughs> Protests spreading to more cities across the country, including New York City, where people arrested at least 40 people. In Los Angeles and in Denver, dozens gathered at the state capitol where shots were reportedly fired and one person was hit by a car. In Minneapolis, Target is now temporarily closing 24 stores in the Twin Cities after protesters were seen looting some of its stores in the area. You have every absolute right to be angry. However, you have no right to perpetrate violence and harm on the very communities that you say that you are standing up for. And President Trump weighed in on Twitter, blaming the city's Democratic leadership for the violence, threatening to call in the National Guard and adding, quote, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington.
And as thank you, now to the latest on the coronavirus outbreak and how it's impacting families across our state. On Thursday, the state health department confirmed 646 new COVID-19 cases. And since the pandemic began, more than 33,000 Hoosiers have been diagnosed with the virus. The Department of Health also reports 37 new deaths from COVID-19. And so far, 1,907 people in Indiana have died from the coronavirus. The IU School of Medicine is launching a statewide study to understand immunity to COVID-19, and they need your help. Researchers want to understand how immunity to COVID-19 can develop and change over time in children and adults who live in Indiana. The goal is to understand the types of immunity people develop to COVID-19 after being sick with the virus. They also want to learn how people who never had symptoms can still develop antibodies or other types of immunity and how long immunity lasts. We want to look at immune responses in both children and adults because understanding how immunity develops in both groups is important to vaccine development. And it's also important in understanding how infection spreads in the community, even in those who don't have symptoms. They are looking for four different groups of people to participate. Those who had symptoms of COVID-19 and tested positive. Those who had symptoms but tested negative or were never tested. People with no symptoms but have been exposed and people who do not have symptoms and have not been exposed. You will need to fill out a survey and then give blood samples over time about four weeks after completing the survey. Then again at about four, 10 and 22 months. Anyone in Indiana can participate, but you have to come to Indiana for the blood work. You will be paid $25 for each blood draw. We do have all the details on how you can sign up right now on the RTV6 app. Our Hiring Hoosiers initiative is a commitment more important now than ever before. It aims to connect you to career opportunities that are still available as the pandemic continues. We're teaming up with the Indiana Black Expo to create the Hiring Hoosiers Employment Opportunity Fair. There will be three virtual career fairs throughout the year. The goal is to help streamline the job search process and keep the community informed about in-demand careers and educational programs. Right now, you know, with small businesses, with, and, you know, individuals with respect to jobs um, and with respect to our educators and our families, um, it's very important that we continue to provide these services in light of COVID-19. The first virtual job fair is scheduled for July 9th. For more information, just go to HiringHoosiers.com. RTV6, RTV6 is helping raise awareness for the United Way's Central Indiana COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund. The fund supports organizations helping the community get through this difficult time in different ways from free meals to book giveaways to child care. IU Health Day Early Learning is one of the agencies benefiting from the fund. It has been offering child care throughout the pandemic, creating a program to give essential workers an option. Jody Skiles is a physician at Riley Hospital for Children. While she continues working on the front lines of the outbreak, her five-year-old and three-year-old daughters go to day early learning. That has been such a godsend for us um, because if I were trying to balance caring for my kids, it would be really hard for me to continue caring for my patients. And so it has been truly such a blessing and um, has allowed me to like basically be able to continue to operate without missing a beat at work. While there are many social distancing measures in place inside and outside of the daycare center, children are screened daily and parents are not allowed inside the building. A local school superintendent says the future of education in his city is on Tuesday's ballot. This morning, what community members have to say about a potential tax increase? Todd. A cold front is heading our way throughout the course of the day today. And this is going to bring some welcome relief from the heat, the humidity, and the daily chance of storms. Now, as the front comes through, there will be some storms here through the middle half of the day. We'll talk about the timeline and look ahead to that weekend forecast coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 440. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Hiring Hoosiers only on RTV6. Voters in Beach Grove will make a decision on two school referenda next week. Our Megan Sanctorum explains the impact they will have on taxpayers if approved and why district leaders say the money is needed.
Two referendums will be on the ballot in Beach Grove as district leaders turn to voters to help support operating and construction expenses. If approved, the operating referendum would allow the district to increase each teacher's base salary by $2,000 and support staff salaries by $1,000. It will also allow the district to hire three school resource officers and three guidance counselors. The construction referendum would allow the district to build an early childhood center and make upgrades to existing school buildings and the high school athletic facilities. Some voters say they support their school district, but they think this is a tough time to ask taxpayers for more money. It's not a bad time because there's a lot of people that are trying to watch their pennies. We don't need any higher taxes than what we're paying right now. If approved, the referendums would be phased in over three years. The owner of a $95,000 home would pay roughly an additional $5 per month in 2021 and about $11 extra per month by 2023. If they are not approved... We'll just have to move forward and... Uh... Uh, and do what we can within the, the means that we have available. But we think our kids and our teachers deserve uh, the opportunity to move forward and to enhance uh, their teaching and learning opportunities. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. Megan, thank you. This morning on the RTV6 app, we have everything you need to know about the issue and the others at stake in Tuesday's primary. Let's get another check here. Storm Team 6 forecast now with Todd. All right, we're going to start off with the good news here, Nicole, across the area, and that's the weekend forecast. Right on cue in the last weekend here of May, and we're going to feature lots of sunshine, low humidity, and high temperatures that will be in the 70s. Now, to get there, we do have to go through the passage of a cold front uh, later on today, and that is going to bring in uh, the chance of uh, some showers. Temperatures right now are sitting in the mid-60s, so it's comfortable out there. 64 in Indy, 65 in Bloomington, uh, 65 in Richmond, there is a little bit of humidity still that is present. And as you go over to Storm Team 6 radar, we do have some rain already out there this morning. It's not the real heavy rainfall like we had uh, during the course of uh, yesterday morning uh, where we had some minor flooding that took place. But there are some showers from Bloomfield to Bloomington. Then as we slide to the north here, a heavier downpour near Brazil and then another one in between Rockville and Greencastle. So that is the precipitation or the storm storms out ahead of the cold front that is heading our way. And I would expect as the morning progresses that the showers will become a little more numerous across the area. And so if you are going to be out and about for that morning walk or just getting out and about to start your day in general, uh, just know that there are some showers and we will have the potential of some rainfall. Now the cold front is still off to our west and there's a couple things I want to point out. There's not a whole lot of precipitation along this front right now, but as it advances into our area, it'll become coming through once the sun is up and that's going to give it a little more daytime heating. But on the back side of the front, you know how quickly the clouds uh, come to an end and we get into the clear sky. So throughout the course of the day today, watch for scattered showers this morning from noon onward during the warmer part of the day. I do think we flare up a few isolated storms with maybe some gusty winds and some lightning. The best chance of those will be on the eastern side of the state since the front gets there by three o'clock. But as soon as this front goes through, we'll start to usher in a completely new air mass. The humidity will drop and we'll get the sunshine in here right away. So by the time we get to the afternoon and evening, it should be really nice across the area with temperatures that will be in the 70s with skies that will become partly cloudy. So just be a little bit patient here this morning and then look at Saturday and Sunday. Low temperatures in the 50s. You can give the air conditioners a break, open up the windows, enjoy the lower humidity as well with temperatures on Sunday that may even struggle to get to 70 degrees and then we do warm it back up next week first week of june by wednesday 88 degrees with thunderstorms and then thursday a high temperature nicole still right around 86 degrees all right Todd, thank you let's take a live look outside on this friday morning as we keep an eye on traffic for your morning commute this is i-65 at keystone avenue you can see some construction crews out in this area as they work on some bridge work so if you're heading out the door just be aware of that and slow down in that area and according to Todd's forecast, this weekend would be great to go camping, but you may run into a problem. 
no place to camp. This morning, a majority of Indiana State Park's campgrounds are full. However, we did check overnight and there were still campsites available at O'Bannon Woods State Park. There's also equestrian spots available at Brown County and Tippecanoe River State Park. DNR officials say there's still plenty of rooms available at state park inns and cabins as well. A northern Indiana woman says she's heartbroken after a burglar swiped her pet monkey. Beth Garber has owned monkeys for the past few years and has had a fascination with them since she was a child. She brought home her newest primate, Gia, on Mother's Day weekend. Then this past Tuesday, she got up in the middle of the night and found someone breaking into her house. Beth says the monkey does require specialty care and if she doesn't get it, she could be dead within days. I know that her little heart's looking for me like I'm looking for her and I won't stop. I, I, I mean, I know she has to be found no matter what. Well, Beth believes she knows who took Gia, but the Elkhart County Sheriff's Office says they couldn't talk about an ongoing investigation. Downtown's original farmer's market has been open during warm weather for well over a century. After the break, why a monumental move by the market shouldn't be hard to find. And coming up at 5 o'clock, the weekend is supposed to be nearly picture perfect in the weather department. Working for you, we're looking into what you need to know if you plan to head out on the lake. It's 4.50. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. Stay with us. A pussycat on price. As the calendar rolls into June, many of the area's farmers markets are starting to open up, but things are a bit different this season. As our Brad Brown shows us, one of the biggest changes comes with the city's original farmers market, which is making a move even farther into the heart of downtown. The venue's location may have changed, and some things are certainly quite a bit different this season. But the original Indy Farmer's Market remains a vibrant part of downtown in the spring. When we speak about our vendors, they are incredible team players. So I can move them all around the city, and they'll be like, thank you for having us. You're working so hard. So that's the type of people that we're surrounded with. So it's that energy that really makes these farmer's markets so great. Construction around City Market has led to a move of merchants from Market Street to Monument Circle. And as the weather warms up, the crowds continue turning out to support these local businesses. Oh, it's been great. We've got excellent uh, accessibility here. People can uh, drive up at some of the circle and just kind of do a drive through. Uh, it's been really awesome. I, I love the location. So far, so good. So, you know, the COVID didn't take away from that. We got moved over here a couple weeks ago, and we've been doing just as well as we were over there. Farmers and growers from all over central Indiana continue to show up every Wednesday. It was a little spotty as people adjust to the new location, because you know how that is. People don't know it moved, and they go to the... Old, old habits die hard, I guess, but it's, it's good. Today's a really good day. There are the usual signs of the times. People are distancing as best as they can. The friendly conversations taking place a little further apart. But behind most of those masks are still plenty of smiles for Hoosiers supporting Hoosiers. Everybody's been doing a great job of really embracing the, uh, the, all the new rules and kind of things like that. The vendors are all really glad to be here, really good to be a part of it, and people are still coming out. There's been some markets that have canceled, but the produce that we planted don't know that. <laughs> it's still coming on, you know? So we're trying to adjust to that, trying to find an outlet for that still. But we're, we're going to beat it. It's really important to turn to your local farmer and see what these people are offering. And luckily, they're here to supply. This is, this is what they do. So they're glad to have you and as much as you're glad to have them. The market will remain around Monument Circle for its entire season. That runs through the summer and into the end of October. Crews are digging up the streets around City Market, working on utilities for the next few months. There will be upwards of 20 vendors around the circle once things get into full swing. The original Indy Farmer's Market is open every Wednesday, rain or shine, from 9.30 to 1.30. Working for you, Brad Brown, RTV6. All right, thank you, Brad. Always a good thing to do on a Wednesday if you are downtown. And a lot of farmers markets going for the day tomorrow. It should be spectacular weather uh, for all those. A new air mask will be in place by tomorrow morning. In fact, you may need a jacket tomorrow morning if you're venturing out early to those farmers markets with temperatures in the 50s. To get there, though, we have to go through around the showers and storms for the first half of the day today. I think this evening should be just fine. But really, Saturday through Monday is a beautiful stretch of weather with temperatures in the 70s and low humidity. Then we'll start to 
increase the humidity and the temperatures once again by the middle of next week with thunderstorms returning to the forecast as we work our way into Wednesday and Thursday. The time now is 4.57. This is Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. We're back in just a couple minutes. Stay with us.